bisa nggak kakak tahu. I've got no sign. Sand. Why haven't I got sand? Sand there. Not muted. Hello, can anyone hear me? Anyone on YouTube? No. Yeah, anyone on YouTube, can you come on and just set, set tell me if I've got sand? Have I got sand? I don't know, I've had, had an issue. Yeah. Got no sand. sound I've got no sound okay thank you so I, I can't hear on my headphones my headphones aren't doing anything okay thank you for that right um well, what was I hearing from that? I was talking about Sebastian, Sebastian Rogers. There's been a few uptakes, and updates, I should say. And it's now gone from the search to an investigation. That happened, when did that happen Monday? So, it's been a couple of days now since that happened. And I showed the interview between the first interview of the mother, where that vile creature was sitting in the background, watching her, watching what she was saying. And then I showed you the second interview where both the mother and stepfather spoke. And then last night, <laughs> just as I was on another live, talking about another case. Uh, someone told me that I had um, the father, the bio father, had done an interview. So, as soon as I come off that live last night before I went to bed, I've got to find this interview. So, I did, and we've got, I have got it right, and all right. 
But what I'm going to do first, I just want to go through a couple of things first. And we're going to look at some, no, boxes. Mm, what am I looking at? Uh, yeah, look, see what this one says. Oh, no. Oh, I don't need that one. Right. Well, I'll just go straight to the first that interview with the father. I think it's the interview. Oh no, there's this one. The National Sheriff's Office is looking for a family. Right, this is the um the one I seen earlier. Hold on, hold on. It's the teen's Can mother and stepfather say he just walked out of the time pleading for their boy to come home hardening bear also interviewed his biological father money has you son run, you know run to the next person you meet if they use their phone call 911 tell them who you are let them find you Authorities announced yesterday their search efforts have been scaled back. Parents have not been assessed. They are cooperating with this investigation. Originally, police told neighbors in the Shackle Island area to check any doorbell or home security footage from late last Sunday night Monday morning when the bastion disappeared. They are asking to check footage earlier. Here's another look at the photos we have of Sebastian. Sorry, my internet playing up for some reason. Right? Well, that was the first one I came across. All right, I'm going to set that up again. Anyway, so um, that's just, I know they've said it all the way along, the parents. They've got nothing on the parents and not looking at the parents. But I think they'll be looking at the parents now. Now he's going into the investigation side. I think they'll be looking at the parents. Not the by, by the father, but the stepfather. And even the mother. I don't think the mother's involved. She, she was too traumatic. Uh, she was heartbroken. Right? Uh but it's weird now how they're asking for any sightings of him from Sunday, early, well, Sunday afternoon onwards. And that is because I'm not saying he's, that um, Sebastian has died, is dead. They just want proof that he was there on the Sunday. You know what I mean? And I also noticed something, because by the way, something I was reading. Uh, apparently, the mother and stepfather have got two other children. Because the bio father has said he's got no other children. Sebastian is his only child. And when you read up, 
it says she's got a 10 year old and I think a 12 year old but you don't hear of anything about them I know that I'm not involved but when Sebastian when you find out that Sebastian asked Father Christmas for Christmas all he wanted for Christmas was friends does he not play interact with his half brothers and half sisters you know what I mean does he not interact with them I don't understand. If there's ever children in the household, why, why isn't he interacting with them? And like I said uh, yesterday, I know the internet isn't brilliant for youngsters. I know it isn't. It's a nasty place. But if you monitor them, and you can monitor your children, you can monitor them, right? Um, you can set uh, perimeters on you on the cat on the laptop or computer because I've got two search engines on my laptop, right? I've got Google and I've got this other one. I can't use that other one because it won't let me on half. It won't let me on the sites that I want. I need to get on. Put it that way. And I've got, I don't know how to get the perimeters took off. So I'll just stick to my Google. So there is ways of setting perimeters on a lap on a computer, a laptop, tablet. We set it for our grandchildren. They're on their tablets 24-7. And they've got perimeters set on their tablets. They know what they can't have. Hi there, MG. No, you haven't missed anything yet, hon. Right, um, so I'm going to do that interview in a minute, but I'm just talking basically about the father, the stepfather and the mother. And every scenario I have gone through, I'm here, on the maps, Google Maps, I've gone through every scenario thinking perhaps he's made his way to his bio dad, right? And perhaps he's gone cross country. Perhaps he got hold of a map or something and he was able to follow a map. Because he might be autistic, but believe me, they are very clever. Very clever, these children. Right? So I was thinking perhaps he'd gone walk through the woods. But then it comes back to the dogs. There was no scent of him outside that house. Well, outside the uh, perimeter of that house, you know what I mean? There's no no sense of him. There's nothing on camera, right? No digital evidence of him, no video of him. Now, let me find out in the interview with his parent, his mother and his stepfather, that he don't like getting dirty, right? Now, I can't see a, I don't care if they're three or five or 15, a 15 year old, they don't like dirt, they are an autistic. They are not going to go into the woods where you will get dirty, where there are books. He don't like flies. He hates flies. <clears throat> so how's he gonna cope in the woods? He's not, he's really gonna struggle. So, but every time I go for, okay, let's look this way, let's go down this avenue. But then again, it comes back to the dogs. There was no scent of him. So how did he leave that house and walk away from that house and leave no scent? No digital evidence of him. Any videos, any door cams, nothing. Right? And there's no sink. So there's things that say to me, well, he hasn't left the house then. He's still in the house somewhere. Or he's been took out by carry dad. No. And something else that bothered me was that he went to work on the Sunday. Obviously after they'd been for their lunch or whatever. 
So they come home and then he's gone put to work as a crane operator. And he's three and a half hours to get to work. Right? And um, then he gets to work and then Sebastian goes to bed at nine o'clock. And about 9.40, he's on, they're talking to each other, the mother and the stepfather are talking to each other. Now, okay, if you just got married, you want to be with your husband and whatever, all the time, lovey dovey, you know what I mean? Give me a bookie. But when you've been married after about six months, maybe a year, I'm sure you can go a few more hours without seeing them, especially when you're seeing them all day. Why would you want to spend two and a half hours on the phone when you've just spent two day, a whole day with them? I mean, literally, well, all weekend, because his work starts on a Sunday night, he must finish on a probably Friday morning or Saturday morning, right? But she's just spent a whole weekend literally with him. So why, why would you need to sit there for another two and a half hours talking to each other on the phone? I just can't get... Yes, when I was younger, I'd probably sit there and talk to someone for that long on the phone. I know, but... I don't know if anyone's married or anything. What would you? I was quite glad that my husband went to work. I'd give a sigh of relief out. Thank God. I can actually get my house cleaned now. Because it didn't matter what I'd done in my house cleaning. If he was sitting on that couch, it made my house look messy. So it's like, can you just go out? Go to your mum's. Do some sh Do something. Just leave my house for like an hour or so. So... At least my house can look tidy. So for them to have a two and a half hour conversation when he's just been at home all weekend virtually. Right? And I understand people are saying, well, how would you know she was lying on the sofa? She probably said she was just chilling out on the sofa. And you can tell if someone's feeling sleepy by the way they answer you on the phone. Right. I've been there, I've been talking to someone on the phone and before falling asleep, asleep on the phone. So you can tell when people are sleepy on the phone. So I'm not going to read too much into that, but it's that two and a half hour conversation I can't get over. Anyway, so there's red flags coming up. There's two straight away, the, the, the dogs and the cameras. Now, I feel sorry for the dad, for his dad. Oh, and there's something else that come up. In that interview they did, the mother and the stepfather, they made out like they were very close with his father. They got on really well with each other. You know what I mean? And they said that Sebastian used to go there regular. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking, oh, so he, he did see him during the week then, you know what I mean? And things like that. But no, he didn't. His father only saw him one weekend every two weeks. And didn't always phone up on, in the daytime. He only spoke to them if, it, if there was anything concerning Sebastian. Right? He wasn't on the phone every day to them. And the way he spoke, it's like there was a bit of tension when he spoke about the uh, stepfather and everything. It's like he didn't want to talk about the stepfather. And you'll hear it in his voice in a minute when I play the video. So... Oh my god, I've got 27. Thank you everyone for being here. I'm just going to try and find this video now, wherever it is. Oh no. Oh. 
I'm going to have to sort this out because it's ridiculous. Right, I think this is it. Hold on. Oh, I've got to find the interview. Just got to find the interview. This wasn't the interview. It's a telephone call. Where's the telephone call gone? Oh, God. I had it earlier. Don't tell me. I've got to try and find it again. Not that one. I know that. It's only 51 seconds, that one is. Oh, God. Why is he not showing it me? Oh, don't. Where is it? I had it. I freaking had it earlier. And now I can't find it. Hours going through everything, making sure you've got everything you need. Then all of a sudden, you go to put it on and it's not there. What's up, my side? Ah, found it. Right, so we're going to listen to the phone call. But I just said, listen to how, how his voice, to his voice when they mention the mother and the and his stepfather. Tell me if you pick up on anything. Oh, I'm gone. He's got a big heart. He's loving. You know, he's inquisitive. He can be stubborn at times. He loves to play video games. He loves animals. I mean, he thoroughly loves animals. He likes plants. He likes to, you know, grow things. He likes to take care. I'm just trying to find you. I don't know where he's at. But I, 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 <laughs> so I was, I was driving one, and it would have been two weeks prior. He would have, he was at my house, and I got to see him. We got to play video games. That's. Yeah. had a great weekend and i mean obviously it seems like what has it been like working with law enforcement have they been great you know trying to help you with this search they're definitely doing everything that they can to find my son and i thoroughly appreciate it and i hope i hope that they find him every day and i'm waking up hoping that they find him and obviously, so he's autistic. Are there any like tendencies that he may have? Like, does he like hanging out like in the trees or by water that can maybe help people find him? He does like creeks. I mean, he loves to go fishing with me. But if he's in the city limits, he's, you know, video games. He'd probably be, you know, maybe an arcade or something. Okay. And has he ever done something like this before? Just leave the house for a short period or anything like that? I mean, Lee Penny lost over this last week, kind of what that experience has been. I haven't had to sleep at all. Coffee, he drinks, and where his mind died is great. Yeah. 
And um, I know you said you were out there searching or are there any, any particular places that you're looking that you think he might be at? I'm looking everywhere. I'm not from this area, so uh, I don't know him. So I'm just uh, everywhere. I, you know, I keep telling people, keep your head up and your eyes open. If you see him, call 911. And I'll put my son here's my voice. But you need to get a phone and not, you know. Definitely. And you, you live in Clark yeah. Okay. You've been out here in the Hendersonville area just searching for him the last week. Every day. And um, I guess, are you in conflict with his mother and stepfather uh, about the situation? Picked up. Not letting me up now. This internet is doing my head in. Well, I'll, I'll go back a little bit because I got kicked off and it. My internet again. I'm going to have to phone it tomorrow. Uh, tough because as a parent you just want your kid home but there's been a lot of like speculation too about possible like criminal investigations i mean what's kind of your reaction to all, all of that chatter on social media i don't have social media man. okay but just hearing people kind of speculate about that in the community i guess how does that make you feel I think they need to, you know, instead of being keyboard warriors, they need to put feet on the ground and start looking for my son. If they really want help, that's what they should be doing instead of coming up with their own opinion. How about I get out there and we look every five my son? And how much does your son Sebastian mean to you? He's my life. Do you have any other kids? Oh, okay. Um, and I guess, is there, I guess, anything you want to say? I don't know how well you know the stepfather or the mother, but is there anything you'd like to say about that and that situation and how he just kind of disappeared from the house? Okay. And if you could say something to Sebastian right now, what would you say? If you are here in the sun, you need to tell people who you are and tell them to call 911 for you. You need to tell people that you are Sebastian Rogers and that you need them to call 911. And anything you'd like to tell him about turning home? I miss you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Is that it? Yeah, that was it. Right. Yeah, I'm already imagining things there when you they mentioned about how he gets on with the 
mother and a stepfather. I can play it again if anyone wants me to. I'm just... I'm just picking up a bit of a... Oh, well, I don't really want to talk about them sort of thing. I don't know. And when they said they, they was on the phone daily with him, they got on really good with each other. I don't think there was. I think there's something not right. And I think the stepfather is very controlling. The mother is heartbroken, but the stepfather. Okay, it's he's the stepfather. But well, when you marry a woman who's got another child, you treat that child like your own. You do. You take that responsibility on as well. And you treat that child as your own. I know he's got another father, his proper father. That child is living with you. You've got to treat him as your own. So I think he's very, very strict. He said that himself in the one interview we've done. He's very strict. And I think he's also very controlling. Controlling with the wife and the son. And if I'm right, they've got two other children. I'm hearing they've got two other children. You know what I mean? So, but you don't hear nothing of them. But, but then again, they're not the ones involved in this, are they? But I think the police will be looking at the mother. Not so much the mother, but more the stepfather. Because actually, I don't even want those J J R R investigates. Right. I said the other day, I said I didn't know the address or the house, right? Didn't know which house it was. But when I went on Google Maps and I was going around, there's this one house that kept, I don't know what it was, there's just this one house that kept pulling me to it. Something about the garages, and I think it was the fact that it had trees around, where all the other houses were very open, right? This house had trees on the front and everything. So it is shaded, uh, covered from the road a bit. It wasn't as open. But it was a garages and you know what? That's the same house they live in. J.L.R. J, J Jonathan Lee, whatever, investigates. Yes, I've seen that picture, MG. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I've seen that picture. I've seen quite a few other pictures of him. But I don't think things were happy in that household. And there's rumour, I said it the other day, there's a rumour but apparently he was speaking to the neighbours and he was saying how the situation with Sebastian was causing a bit of tension in their home. I don't know who it is. I hope it's not true. Right? So, but I'm sorry. I said it the other day and I'll say it again. And I will apologise sincerely if, if it comes back, I'm wrong. But, for the dogs to have no scent, and for no houses to pick him up on camera, then he, a, he hasn't left that house, or B, he was carried out. And they've got the garage, so we can take him straight into the garage from the house. So, but I'm not going to show him where, what was that? I think it was a lot more than the normal thing. Yes. 
Yes, I think so. But then again, I don't know a lot on autistic children, but I know a little bit. I've got two grandsons. One is on the spectrum, and one who's like, and they're both six years old. One's on the spectrum, and one is just going to get the dog get checked for it now. And we've been saying for years he needs to be checked, he needs to have this diagnosis. Right? Because the one who's been, who's going for the uh, process of it now, he's, he's got traits of a child with autism or ADS or whatever, ADHD, one of them. <clears throat> my grandson, well, my one grandson who's, gone, who's on the spectrum, now he's very, what was that, I think stepdad didn't care for all of that's the only one we probably all of that. Yes. Yeah, I think that, I think he's very controlling. I'll pop that up so I just can see. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's just so, so children with autism, they find it hard to make friends with others. Now, all they want to do is be friends. All they want to do is play. But children who haven't got autism kind of like back away from them. You know, you know, something's not right with you. And they back away. And it breaks my heart when I see that happen with my grandson. It really does. It breaks my heart. And my other grandson, well, he's on the spectrum. Now, he's totally different. He's more quiet one. He's more... Um, he's not... Like, my one grandson is very hot brash. He's full on, 24-7. Running around, it's like he's got these uh, watching iron batteries inside him. I feel like, can I take the batteries out? You know what I mean? And my other grandson is very quiet. And he'll sit there and he'll watch TV or he'll go on his tablet and he'll watch his tablet. You know what I mean? And another thing I find with children with autism, it's very hard to get them to go to the shops very hard but i know where you're coming from mg i did that's what i'm thinking i think he did control the mother it was just the mother and the son at first and then she'd met this guy married him and he's become very controlling and what bothers me is he's got another case going on in another state or wherever wherever which has been going on since uh, 2017. And it's a child custody case. I have never known or heard of a child custody case be going for arm for 17, 17, 8, 9, 20, 3, 4, I don't know, 17 to 18, 6 years, for 6 to 7 years, that case has been going on. You know what I mean? It's a long time for a, a child custody case to be going on. Why? What's the problems? Do you know what I mean? And yet the, the stepfather says it has nothing to do with Sebastian. He probably doesn't. Right? But then again, perhaps it's your behaviour, your attitude, the stepfather's attitude. And how controlling he is. That does have something to do with Sebastian. I hope to God I'm wrong. I hope to God one day this boy will come out and some of us we found him. I hope to God I can go up to my mum and see something on here where they're telling us that boy has been found alive. It's not looking like it. It's not, I'm sorry. 
So uh but no uh, I'll do I'll dig up some hours to mm. just read three books. You know what? If you don't mind, can we just have this again? Can you just listen to this call again? Because I know I lost internet during it and it kicked me off. So and I think we lost it just at the pivotal point which I wanted people to hear. So let's just listen to this again. Oh. Oh God. Tell me a little bit about your son. He's got a big heart. He's loving. You know, he's inquisitive. He can be stubborn at times. He loves to play video games. He loves animals. I mean, he thoroughly loves animals. He likes plants. He likes to, you know, grow things. He likes to take care of things. He loves his video games. Boy, the kid loves his video games. What what has the last week been like for you as a father? My heart is missing somehow. Somewhere out here, and I'm just trying to find him. Yeah, I don't know where he's at. And when was the last time you got to see Sebastian? Last time he was at my house. So... I was supposed to have him last weekend, the week is prior to the house, and I got to see him. And we got to play video games, watch TV. Great weekend. And I mean, obviously, it seems like what has it been like working with law enforcement? Have they been great, you know, trying to help you with this search? They are definitely doing it everything they can to find my son and I thoroughly appreciate it and I hope I hope that they find him every day and I'm waking up hoping that they find him obviously so he's autistic yeah. any like teeth that he may have does he like me find him Okay. And has he ever done something like this before? Just leave the house for a short period of time or, or anything like that? So over the last week, walk me through kind of what that experience has been. Coffee and energy drinks, and there is my main diet is great. Like, yeah. in the class, I'm, I'm not quite, like, she's saying so hard as well. She understands. And I remember once I was at the park with my grandson, right? And he's playing around on this climbing frame. And he, he calls it a castle because it's got towers in there. You can walk along to one tower and then to another. And I'm just sitting up at this one bench and I'm watching him. And then all of a sudden, I just took my eyes off him for a matter of over a minute, two minutes, because I was just making sure I got everything in the bag because we was getting ready to come home. And as I'm doing that, I heard this woman shouting. And I've looked up. And this woman stood there shouting and pointing at my grandson. Whoa, that's like a, a red 
right to a ball. I went up there and I said, excuse me, who are you talking to like that? And she said, that lad there. I said, and she turned around and she started pointing a finger at me. I said, hey, don't shout at my grandson like that. If you've got a problem, ask him who, where, it, where his parents are and he'll tell you. He'll point you to me and you come and speak to me. I said, and she stood there, point, wagging her finger at me. Wagging, and I'm getting so upright because she wasn't listening. I said, you're shouting at him and he doesn't understand why you're sh shouting at him for. He doesn't understand. And she kept pointing her finger. I said, and if you point that finger at me once more, I'm going to break the flipping finger. And with that, she turned around and looked at her partner, her husband. And I stood there and I looked at him. And he's kind of like, gave this shrug of his shoulders, a shrug of his shoulders and said, like, so sort of looked and said, don't get me involved. He had that look like, I'm not getting involved. And her face just changed then because he was, she wasn't getting a back up from him. I thought, no, sorry, love. This isn't between him. He's the one standing here, shouting at my grandson, pointing finger at him when he doesn't understand what he's done wrong. Right? I said, anyway, I said, so I turned around to Ellis. I said, right, Ellis, come on down now, anyway. So he's come down. And with that, I, I let him play for about another 10 minutes. Then I went home. But I wouldn't go, I was going home. But because she did what she did, I was determined to let him stay a bit longer. Because no one is going to talk to my grandson, either of my, any of my grandkids, like that woman did. You know what I mean? She only had to ask, where's your mum, dad, or whoever, and he'd have pointed or said, my grand is up there, and he'd have pointed to me. He would have even called me. You know what I mean? In which case, I'd have heard him call me, so straight away, I'd have been up. But she didn't. She just went, flipped out on him, pointing and shouting and screaming at him. I'm not having that. So... And I get where he says he, his son is very, you know, when they say he gets, gets something in his head and that's it, he's right. There's no wrong with him. He's right all the way. That's my grandson. He gets something in his head and it doesn't matter how much we say to him, but Ellis, that isn't right. He's adamant that what he says is correct. And you can't win with him. And he gets so stressed out that he'll literally have a meltdown. He'll literally have a meltdown. So we, when, when he's doing something which isn't right, I'll just say, Ellis, or if he says something that isn't right, I'll go, well, there's other ways of looking at this, Ellis. You know what I mean? And he'll go, and he'll stop and he'll look at me and he'll go, have. So then I give him my opinion. And I go, hmm, but I'm still right. And he'll walk off. He won't have his mouth down. So there's ways of talking to a child with autism who's got it in their head that they are right. Whatever it is, they are right. Without screaming and shouting at them. And without going, you know what? Go to your room. I don't send him to his room because his room is what I call their safe place. Somewhere he can go if he wants to be on his own. His safe place. So I don't discipline him by sending him to his room. You know what I mean? I might take his tablet off him and say, when you can calm, when you calm down and you're It'll go on a meltdown for about 10 minutes, but once he's had that meltdown, it'll calm down and he'll come back and uh, he'll say, can I have my tablet? I'll go, what do you have to do to say first? And he'll go, he'll look at me and he'll go, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? So then I'll give him his tablet back. But it's right what they say, kids with autism, if they get something in their head, that is it. They've got to do it or they've 
that is right. Whatever it is, they've got to do it. And right, we'll continue. I know you said that you were out there searching. Are there any particular places that you're looking that you think he might be at? I'm looking everywhere. I'm not from this area, so uh, I don't know it. So I'm just uh, everywhere. I, you know, I keep telling people, keep your head up and your eyes open. If you see him, call 911. You know, if, if my son hears my voice, buddy, you need to get a, to a phone and call 911, you know. Definitely. And you, you live in Clarksville, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but you've been out here in the Hendersonville area just searching for him the last week? Every day. And um, I guess, are you in close contact with his mother and stepfather uh, about the situation? Not really. I mean, we're in communication at least once a day, but that's about it. Um, just I'm looking for him, you know. Yeah. And I know, like, obviously with social media, it's tough because as a parent, you just want your kid home. But there's been a lot of, like, speculation, too, about possible, like, criminal investigations. I mean, what's kind of your reaction to all of that chatter on social media? I don't have social media, man. Okay. But just hearing people kind of speculate about that in the community, I guess, how does that make you feel? I think they need to, you know, instead of being keyboard warriors, they need to put feet on the ground and start looking for my son. If they really want to help, that's what they should be doing instead of coming up with their own opinion. How about I get out there and we look every time my son? And how much does your son Sebastian mean to you? He's my life. Do you have any other kids? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I guess, is there, I guess, anything you want to say? I don't know how well you know the stepfather or the mother, but is there anything you'd like to say about that and that situation and how he just kind of disappeared from the house? I have nothing to say about that. Uh, okay. And if you could say something to Sebastian right now, what would you say? If you are here in the sun, you need to tell people who you are and tell them to call 911 for you. You need to tell people that you are Sebastian Rogers and that you need them to call 911. And anything you'd like to tell him about returning home? I miss you, buddy. And I'm waiting. I want to hear from you. How can you? All right. I'll make one one so we can find you, man. Come on, son. Right. Now, listening to that, I'm in tears. Okay, MG. I'm losing internet again. I thought not being on today and just coming on tonight at seven o'clock, my internet would be fine. But no, I, I'm in tears when I listen to that. You know what I mean? It's his only child. He got to see him once a fortnight. So it was due to have him the weekend just gone. So two weeks prior to that, he's been here. So we had him like uh, the weekend before he went missing, I suppose. Not the weekend before he went missing, the weekend, a week, the weekend before that. But they made out that unless he speaks to his dad on his phone, and that's how he's in contact with him so regular. But yeah, I do. I think that phone, he had more use to that phone. So, 
it's I don't know what any everyone's opinions. Hold on. Oh, I've only got two on all the others on here are from um Twitter. Hi there. Anyway, so it's just heartbreaking. And I don't think they was as close as the mother and stepfather were saying. Oh, we got on fine. Yes, we had our disagreements, but we sat down and talked them out. You know, you sat down and talked them out what you wanted. You know what I mean? Like in your household, your house, you don't have internet. While the children don't have internet. Now, as I said, you've, I, they have isolated that little boy. He has no friends at home. You don't play out. He has no internet connection, so he can't speak to anyone online. And as I said, they can put blockers on. They can, you know what I mean? You can't block certain sites that a child can go on. And you can monitor what they're doing online. You can monitor them. So I don't understand why they wouldn't let him have internet. As I said, I've got a grandson who's six, is on the spectrum, and I've got another grandson now who's being checked, going through the process of being checked for autism, right? And they both have their tablets, but we monitor what they watch. And at a certain time on the night time, the tablets go off. And we put a film on for them so they can sit in bed and fall asleep while watching the film. Or even during the day, I say, yeah, if the tablet dies, I go, you know what, let's put something on the TV for you to watch then. So he'll do that. So, and they said he likes to play games. Do they actually get to spend the time to, to play games with him? Do they have to sit down and play games with him? Or do they just leave him in his, in his own little world, in his bedroom? Oh, he's being quiet, so we'll leave him alone. Sort of thing. I don't understand why a child would want to leave in the first place. If it's such a happy home and loved by everyone in that home, why would you, why would you leave? Right? But as it comes back time and time again, the dogs. And I'm sorry to say this, I've said it earlier and I'll say it again. The only way that child left that house was if he was carried out. Right? Now, I was watching JLR earlier and he was saying, well, if the father, stepfather was at work and it takes him three and a half hours to get to work, he must have left about two, three o'clock in the morning. Right? So I left a comment for him. And I said, his, the stepfather was at work overnight. Now, I don't know about crane operators. I don't know if they do work overnight during the night. I don't know. See, you know what I mean? If you work on the docks or ports and you're unloading ships and whatever, and, and you're in the big cranes, then possibly. But I don't know what sort of work he did on the crane he just said he's a crane operator so it's the same and rumor was out at first that the father the bio father the one you just spoke now was either a police officer or in the co correction facility working the uh, prisons and he doesn't so it just shows you can't go on everything you hear he doesn't work in that, he, what was it he said he was? A mechanic or something like that? Nothing to do with the police. So I can't understand why that rumour went round. Because I said, in one of my lives, I said the father won't say anything because he'll be restricted into what he can say because of his position. If he works in the police, all the corrections facilities, like the prison, then he's got to be careful what he says. 
but it doesn't work for any of them. He's a mechanic. I believe he said he's a mechanic. Hold on. Let's see if I can find him. <coughs> um, oh, God, I'm trying to find it now. Uh, oh, there's this. I'll share this. This is a fundraiser, right? And it's been set up by his aunt. And she set it up to help the father. Because while, while he's been missing, while Sebastian's missing, the father has been searching, dying, day out. He's not been working. And bills have still got to be paid. So this money they are raising is to help the father with any bills. You know what I mean? Because he's going to be losing his uh, business or his job or whatever it is he has, whether it's his own business or not, he's still got to pay bills. So to help him, help the father to be able to stay out there looking for his son, she set this up. And I think she asked for, was it, I think she's gone over the limit like she first asked for. Because, hold on, I'm sure she said she said 2000. Right. But she, I'm sure she said 2000. So she's obviously, oh, she's raised it now to 3000. Yeah. I knew she said, I'm curious she said 2000, but it's gone above 2000, so she's had to raise it. And so, if anyone wants to help in any way, please help the father by donating here. It is a legitimate site, it's not a scam site, it is the aunt. I've checked it out. Right? Sarah Swank is the is his aunt. And um, if you're not sure, check her out yourself. She's, you've only got a punch her name in. Punch her name in with Sebastian Rogers and so it'll come up as his arm. And she loves him to bits. So she's doing this to help the father. So his father can keep looking for his son. He's not giving up. And if he's not giving up, neither are we. We are here. Pull it foreseeable future but I don't think no it doesn't MJ it doesn't it works as a mechanic or something I read it but then again I can't believe that either can I so but I read it works as a mechanic so um Hold on, let's see if I can find something. Oh. Right, let's see what comes up. Oh, God, you keep coming up to someone else. No. Try this. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll show you this. I'm going to show you this because this is just so. Right? Oh, God, there's isn't coming up. 
Uh, coming up. Stream you out, you'll gain my hacking. Okay, well, see this article here. Done. Now, right? this is the mother and the stepfather, right? Chris, whatever his name is. Right? It says here, uh, blah, 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 blah. Katie Proudfoot is Sebastian Rogers' mother. She is 38 years old and works as a nurse at a local hospital. Now, this is what is going to blow your head. She has been married to Seth Rogers for 16 years. No, she hasn't been married to Seth Rogers. She probably was married to him, but she's not, not now. And they have two other children. A 12-year-old daughter and a 10-year-old son. So, is that a typo when they put the wrong naming or something? And not only that, she's been married to that other guy not 16 years, because Sebastian's 15, and she had Sebastian when she met that Chris guy. So she hasn't been, hasn't been married to him for 16 years. So I think some people, when they're doing their write-ups about members of a family, is getting the names right and the dates right and all that lot. Because I was reading it, I thought, oh, Tom, she, she isn't married to Seth no more. She was. I believe she was. I'm not sure about that, but she was with Seth. They had their son, Sebastian. Then they split up, got divorced, whatever it was. And uh, I'm not sure if he's remarried, but then she got remarried to him. And I don't like the look of him. Look at her face. You know what I mean? Look at his face. Come on. He's got, he shows no sympathy at all to what she is going through. She is going through hell. And he's showing no sympathy. And I noticed as well, that there's only one or two times, maybe three times, during that interview, that she looked at him. The rest of the time, she didn't look at him. She literally just looked straight ahead, like she is now, looking straight ahead. She didn't look at him. So it's heartbreaking. I'm going to check that MG because I'm sure it told me that I can't find it now, but I read somewhere it was a mechanic or something like that. But I did hear that he worked for the sheriff's department in another county. Then I heard he worked for the uh, prison in the prison justice in the prisons, right? And then I heard he's a mechanic. So. I think that someone needs to start getting the facts straight because there's so many different rumours going around about Seth, the bio father. Yeah. I think I think that might have been so much to do with chess or something, MJ. And that's something else. I said that. He may not be getting internet at home, but I know they have internet at school. My grandson has it. They don't have it all day, 
they have it certain sessions of a day or certain sessions during the week they have where they go on the laptops or the computers so yeah so what's saying he wasn't and what's saying when he's at his father's right his father said he doesn't have any social networks so fair enough don't blame me you know what i mean I've got Facebook, but it's just for me and my family and um, some clothes. I've got about 80 some people on my Facebook page. I really don't have many people on there. It's only people who I know or know me. You know what I mean? Like, I used to live down in Birmingham. And I moved from Birmingham to Scotland. And I love, love it up here. Love it. But I keep in touch with people from Birmingham via Facebook. But he doesn't have any of them. But who's saying he doesn't have internet? And who's saying when he's at his dad, he doesn't play on the, the, inter, on the internet with his dad? You know what I mean? We don't know, do we? That might have been a, one of the discussions I've had in the past. Uh, he's not allowed to go on the internet. And his dad's probably took a turn around and said, but he's at my house. I'm watching him. You know what I mean? He could have had all these sort of conversations with, with the mother and the stepfather. But I do, I think he's been on the internet. But I'll tell you now. He did not, did not walk out of that house. Did you? The dogs would have picked his scent up. The dogs would have followed it as far as they could. Sometimes if you go through water, a dog can lose the scent. Right? Sometimes they can pick it up over the other side of the river or stream or whatever. Sometimes. But the dogs would have followed the scent. That is one thing dogs are good at. And you can teach any dog to you can teach any dog to follow a scent. If you've got the time and patience, you can teach them from a puppy to follow a scent. And there's certain dogs that are really good at it. Certain breeds of grow up dogs are really good at following a scent. So that's why they have so only saying have they only have certain breeds to do certain jobs like they have the blood uh, the blood hand they have a certain breed of dog to follow the scent of blood because that breed of dog is good at picking up on the scent of blood but they didn't pick nothing up right it didn't MJ no it didn't and I think they, I think they will be looking into this a lot more now. They will be looking into this now because it's now gone into the investigation side of it, hasn't it? So I'm I feel bad because when I heard first heard about this case over a week ago now, and I heard the crew on every YouTuber, I was watching his channel. And I think it was a fact that I would have picked up on it anyway. And I would have followed it. But this one holds something close to me because the lad has autism. And that holds a big thing for me. And I'll fight for any child with autism. I really will. And I don't think any government in any of the countries give children with autism they don't nourish them enough they don't give them the um what's the word i'm looking for it's like children with autism they're very clever very clever like both my grandsons are good with their numbers like i could throw a number at my one grandson and he'll give me the answer Without thinking, 
without even thinking. Yeah. Yeah, what forensic evidence have they got there? You know what I mean? What forensic evidence have they got? Because there was no blood, because the dogs didn't pick up on any blood. So, and it makes me wonder why are they, well, I know why they're doing it. I know why they are now asking for people to check their cameras from like Sunday lunchtime up onwards because they're looking for proof of life. I'm sorry to say that, they're looking for proof of life. Because the only proof they've got is that one photo that was taken, which was used on the um, missing poster. That's the only, the latest photo was that one. And I think that was when I was up at the shops, either on the Saturday or the Sunday morning. What wording is that? What wording, MJ? Right? So they're looking for proof of life. They want to know that he was alive Sunday afternoon. You know what I mean? Because he's saying he even come back with them. He's saying it could have been an accident. Some it could have had an, had an accident, and they panicked. You know where I'm going. But instead of reporting to the police, said, "Go and hit the body." Right. So it could have been an accident. We don't know. But he definitely didn't walk out of that house on Monday morning. No way. And I'll tell you now where I live in the UK. I don't know if any of you like live in the UK. But I live in, in Scotland. They call, like, in, in the UK, they call uh, high rises. Like, where you got, like, 14, 15, 16 floors. And they've all got flats up. In Scotland, they call them uh, multi. Yeah, I know. Different language altogether up here, believe me. And I live on a top floor. You know, I know as soon as I walk out my flat, I get in that lift. I'm on camera. All the way down to the ground. I get out the lift. I'm on a camera. I walk out the building. I'm on a camera. I walk down towards the main road. I'm on a camera. They can follow me all the way. They can follow me to the bus stop. From me getting onto the bus because there's cameras on the bus, from me getting off the bus to going round to all the shops around the uh, city centre. They can track me. They don't need my phone. They've only got to know my description and they, they can track me. But they've got nothing like that at all for Sebastian. Yeah, I as I said, they're looking for proof of life. And that's why the stepfather, when she mentioned that, she, he wouldn't answer her. He just said, yeah, Scotland, find me Scotland. Right? But, um, so he wouldn't answer the, the woman when she mentioned that to the stepfather. Uh, we've not been like, so, like informed about that. We got, I don't think we, we know. We haven't been told anything about that and all this stuff. They know. And I tell you now, pardon me, they won't be doing no more interviews. Tell you what. They will have lawyered up. Especially him. He will have lawyered up by now. He won't be doing no more interviews. Can't afford to. Right? Oh, Scotland's lovely. It really is. People say, oh no, Scotland's horrible, horrible. But it isn't. I tell you, I live on the 14th floor, the top floor of my 
of my motive. And when I had the engine echo made the other week to do my internet, mm. he said, oh, wow, I love your, the view. Because I can see it over onto the hills and everything. I, I love the view from my window. I just don't like heights. And yes, I live on the 14th floor. I don't like heights, but I live on the 14th floor. <laughs> I'm wondering if I had that come fast. I know. I, I'm wondering that. Did he fast time in though? Because I said, did he think I've been seeing it on his phone? I think he did. He must have fast time or even spoke to him on the phone anyway. So, because the stepfather was adamant in his. He, his house, his house, with their children, Sebastian does not have internet. He's not at the age where he can understand the pitfall sort of thing. And the internet is a dangerous world. It's dangerous for young children. But like I said, they can monitor him. Right? Why did they have to sing, shut him out of everything? Why? No, I mean, he had no one. And, and when I think about what he actually all he wanted for Christmas was a friend. Even his mother said it. I mean, she, when he comes home, he'll have so many friends, he won't know what to do. And you know, I thought, I sat there and I listened to that and I thought, yeah, but will he be allowed to play with them? <laughs> no, I never got to watch I Love Lucy. No. But Scotland is beautiful. It has some beautiful scenery. Right? And I follow a couple of do, um, they've got a camper van thing. Right? And they've been touring around Scotland. And I watched them. And um, they actually come through where I live, where I live in Scotland. But they didn't stay. They just drove through it because they had to be somewhere else. Exactly. Everyone deserves a friend. He had no one. He had a couple of friends at school. That was it. Come on. You don't isolate your son. You encourage him to mingle with other, to mix and socialise with other children. What's he going to do when he leaves school? You know what I mean? And don't tell me a child with autism can't get a job because they can. Right? But it's just so sad and that's what breaks my heart is that they isolated him. You know what I mean? No internet, no friends, only his games to play on his Switch, Nintendo, whatever it is. Right? And um, that's it. Oh, and his school. I understand, like, when I said, like, he had, we could understand when she said, we could understand if we'd been arguing. Because the worst thing you can do is argue with a child who's autistic. It really is, because, I, like I said, when they've got something in their head, it doesn't matter what you think, they are right. And they just have a meltdown in the end. So you just got to find ways of saying, get working around that and getting them to understand that what they're saying or what they are doing is not right. So, oh, I don't know. Yeah, she works in, uh, apparently it says she's a nurse and works with children with special needs. So she should know you don't isolate a child. 
I wake up every morning and I come in the living room and I go and make my coffee, get myself a coffee, and I turn my laptop on and I hit YouTube, go and come into YouTube and I'm scrolling through the news channels, anything, any update on this channel, anything, and there's nothing. And it breaks my heart because he deserves to have a life, you know what I mean? So, but I'm wondering, does the mother know? I don't know. Perhaps she doesn't know, but... Perhaps he's the one who done something happened. You didn't know what, MG? I don't, I'm not sure if she, if she knows or not. I think she might have a suspicion. You know what I mean? I think she's got a suspicion. Because she said when they was talking about the police at the end of the interview, and she said that he said they've done everything they can. They have been magnificent and all this stuff. Said yeah, but they haven't brought, they haven't found him. And he turned around, he looked at her, he said they will, they will. But he didn't say they'll bring him home. Or did he? I can't remember. Either way, it's the way he said it, and I thought, hmm, you know more than what you're saying. His face says it all. When you told me, MJ, to watch that one interview, I did go and watch it, the one without the video. Right? And she was breaking up on that, on that live. She was in bits. And he's the one who's really calm, level-headed guy who said, let's just get facts straight here so it's straight up on the board. So no one can come back and say this or that. You know what I mean? And he spoke about the case. Not so much what the case, what happened with this case that is involved in this child case thing. But he said there is, I, there is another case I'm involved in and it, it's got nothing to do with Sebastian and all this like I'm thinking. Hmm. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. But I, I don't know if to believe half of what I read on here no more. I really don't. I'm going to have to do some deep dives because I don't um, get on here one day and just concentrate on finding the information out I need. But then again, it may not be on there, so if it's not on there, I'm not going to find it. So, but his face, oof. Sorry, love. I think you could have done better. Oh, and apparently, that custody case is dealing with, has been dealing with since uh, 2017. I think, I'm not sure if I heard right, if that was his fifth marriage or this one to Katie is his fifth marriage. But either way, I think it's this marriage to Katie is his fifth marriage. That says a lot, doesn't it, about a guy? You can't, you've been married four times before, now this is not. If I met a guy, I'll tell you something now. My husband died a while, a long time ago now. But it's scary. I would not want to be on that dating game again. No, nope. not going there. Because you don't know who you're meeting. You don't, you don't know. They, you, you think you know someone. Why? But you don't. Cross. I was married to my husband, what, 19, 20 years. And I didn't know everything about him. I'm sure there's things he didn't know about me. 
because you don't know everything about everyone. I don't care what anyone says, you don't know everything about everyone. So it's just oh oh good. But love, I think you could have done better than him. I really did. I'm sorry. I think she's a DP as well. I do. I really think she's he's got her in such a position that she the the DV. I don't know, but I know he, I, I know he's very controlling. I just know that very controlling. And if you try and be over, if if you try to be heavy handed with an autistic child. It's just going to hit you in the face because they're going to fight back. Right? They fight back. Maybe not with their fists or whatever, but they fight back with their tongue. And they can be say some nasty things. They don't mean to say it, but it's just what they're feeling at the time and it comes out. So I'm open to everyone has had it. Had a child say to them, I hate you. You know, I say to my grandson, he says that to me, if I've had to tell him off or something, and he says, I hate you. I say, okay, Ellis, and I go, what? And I go, I love you. Mm. I'll go, as it drops up the hallway. It's okay if he hates me, but I love him. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... If she works in special needs, in the, as a nurse, as with special needs children, if she should know better not to isolate a child. Sorry, it's not happening. You don't isolate any child. You know what I mean? It's like I've got two words I hate. It, it sends the dread of fear into me when I hear these two words. And these two words are soft play right everyone knows what soft play is yeah when one of these plays where you take your child and it's all these soft big beanie bags and everything yeah where the child can't get hurt i hate going there with my grandson because you've got parents it's got the children there, and now I'm watching my grandson, and I'm always on edge. Because, as I said, my grandson can be, be a bit rambush, right? A bit full on. So, when I take him to anything like that, and I haven't took him for a while, and I should really, I'm, I'm waiting for some parents to come up to me and go, that your child or that your grandson, yeah. Well, he's just, you know what I mean? I go, oh God, right? I had a case once where it was at a soft play. Now, my grandson at the time was, I believe, was about four. Yeah, he'd be about four. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching him. I've turned around to have a sip of my coffee. And then as I turn back to see him, there's two lads standing there. And there's about 13, 14. No, 12, 13, say. 12, 13. And they went, is that your son over there? I went, which one? And they said the one in the six top. I went, no, he's my grandson. Well, he just hit me. I went, pardon? Now, I'm talking about two 12 and 13 year olds who look really tall, look like 15, 16 year olds, yeah, coming up to me, telling me my four year old grandson has just hit them. Uh, okay, thanks. You know what I mean? If he had, then I'll have a word with him. And I did have a word with him later. I didn't pull him out of soft play. I had a word with him later. And he said, No. He said, Some kids push me, though. 
And so that's why I won't jump in straight around that, call him out. I won't. Because I'm looking at these two lads and I'm thinking, you're taller than me. Should you even be in here? You know what I mean? And then you've got parents. I remember once I went to Soft Life my sister, with my daughter and, her, and my other grandson. And they wanted to go in this baby area. Right? And me and dear thought, okay, mm. let them go in. Mm. It's for everyone to use. Mm. So they've gone in, and I'm in there with him. And Ellis has gone past this one child. Now, as he's gone past him, he did knock him. But Ellis turned round, straight away, and said, Sorry. Right? This mother went ballistic. And then, excuse me, he said sorry. He didn't mean to knock your son. He's just going past him. Well, he shouldn't be in here. I said, there's no sign saying he can't come in this area. No sign. It's a soft play. There's different sections you can go in. Well, this is for babies. Now, when you think Muslim was about, I'd say about 40, because it's been a couple of years since I've been down to my daughter's with him. Right? So, he's about four or five. And his brain at the time wasn't that of that age. I'd say his brain is like a year behind. So, even though he's six, he's got a mental age of a five year old. So, when he was four, he got a mental age of of a three-year-old, right? So I went, I watch what you're saying there, sweetheart, because you're making assumptions of a child by the size of him. Don't do that. You know nothing about my grandson, so don't make assumptions. And I'm fed up. It does my head in every time we go to anywhere like this. And I'm, I literally have, I'm sitting there biting my nails. I'm just waiting for some parent to come up to me and have a go at me about my grandson doing this or doing that. And this is what my son has said. He can't even have a party for him at these places. Right? Because he's got friends. Right? But when they intermix with the other children, it can get too much for him, right? And he kind of like has a meltdown. So he can't go to have parties like at these soft play things and whatever. He has to have a, a little get together at home where it's just his mom, his dad, me, his ever grand, and a couple of other, two other people. And his little sister, right? Now, his sister is three years old and she took some yucks and whatever for me. And he's been told, can't do that to your sister. Still does it now, and he'll get told, you can't do that to your sister. But then, next breath is she's turning around and she's got a fist coming towards his face. I'm going, oh my lord. We're telling. It. Your brother, he can't do it, and then you're turning around and doing the same back. So she's been at, she knows how to stick up for herself, and she's three years old. So when you get 12 and 13 and 14 year olds come up to you at me and complain about my four year old, I'll just go, Yeah, okay, right, whatever. I'll have a word with him later. And I do have a word, but I'm not going to pull him out of soft play. Just because it's probably not a 14 year old. You know what I mean? He's 14 years old. Pull, pull your big boy pants up. And so many parents are so critical. So critical of children with autism or special needs. Anything with special needs. So critical. And I must admit, it's made me think. Right? I used to have kids. But before I had children, 
and I was on a bus, if there's a child crying, I think, oh my lord, can't you, can't you make that ch child be quiet? You know what I mean? But then when you have children of your own, you understand it. You understand the fact that children are going to play up. But you can't judge a child by how they look. My one, as I said, the one I have on the weekends is six years old. But you know what size clothes is he? He's in size 9 to 10, if not 10 to 11. Size clothing. He's a big lad. Height, everything. I can't even pick him up no more. I cannot. I had to start picking him up when he hit the age of, I think, four. When he was four years old, I said, I cannot pick you up no more. Because he's a big lad. And as I said, he's so on the go. He's so, like, you know, when you tap someone, his tap is like a smack. Like when you play t t uh, um, tag and tag, you're it. He don't just tap you on your shoulder. He literally wallops you on the shoulder. And we have to remind him, you can't do that. You have to tap him on the shoulder. But we don't isolate him. We don't isolate him from other children. You know what I mean? I encourage to take him to the park so he can mingle with other children. But he, this lad, his parents, they isolated him. Why? So that you could con have control of him better. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense why you isolate a child. Anyway. Thank you for everyone joining, watching tonight. Thank you very much. Um, if you've liked what you've heard, what you've seen, I know we haven't talked about what's a lot, but we did listen to that video, that phone call twice, because I'm just thinking, did I miss something there? Am I the only one picking up on this? That tension at the end when they mentioned about, when they asked him about what are his thoughts on his son getting out of the house and things like that. So, anyway, it's now quarter to 10 UK time. So, I'm going to have to say goodnight and thank you all. And if you've liked what you've seen, please give this a like. It's not for me. It's so that the video then gets put out more. And um, the more it gets put out, the more people will see it. And I hope you join me tomorrow. I've got one on a special case. Uh, it's about Laurie Page. She's been missing nine months. She's 12 years old. She's been missing nine months. So please join me tomorrow. So I've got a bit of truck room. Join me tomorrow. If we get any more new updates on this, I will I will do it. I'll talk about that first tomorrow. And then I'll talk about the other case. But at the moment, we've got no new updates. But we'll check in the morning. All right. And so thank you, MG, for commenting. And thank you, everyone, who's been watching this. So please give it a like. Please share it. And if you like what you see, come and join me on YouTube. Subscribe. And you'll be kept updated with all future lives and videos that I do. I'm here for the children, nothing else. Just for the children. Because I don't like what's going on in the world. I don't know like why this is happening to our children nowadays. I just don't understand. They're our future. This should not be happening. The children are our future. And this is happening all the time. As I said, the case I'm looking at tomorrow afternoon, she's been missing nine months. And you know what they're doing? They're only starting to put all, 
all that resources that they should have had nine months ago, they're now putting into it now. But we'll talk about that one tomorrow. So thank you for joining me today. And hopefully I'll see you all again tomorrow. So till then, when I can turn this off. And you, MG, have a good evening. I'm off to bed. <laughs> I'm off to bed. So, good night. Thank you.